National Memory Screening Day is on November 19th. It's a Tuesday this year. And each year it takes place in uh, Alzheimer's Awareness Month, which is November. And uh, it's really important that uh, we try to raise awareness for the 19th, but really any day uh, can be a, a day for memory screening. So the goal is to provide free and confidential assessment of how someone's memory function is doing. Um, it's quick, it's easy, um, and really the ultimate goal is to take those results and bring them to a treating physician so that they can uh, interpret those results um, and get you on a path uh, to memory improvement. Essentially, anyone over the age of 65, I believe, should be screened. Uh, now, uh, if you have a family history of uh, Alzheimer's disease or memory loss, you may want to shift that time period a little bit earlier. Um, and I believe that screening is essential, um, and even screening uh, every year uh, for follow-up is, is also really key. The tests look for a variety of different uh, thinking skills or cognitive functions. Um, and this is really important because, uh, you know, the brain, uh, the memory is important and it's located in one part of the brain, but uh, there's, the whole brain has to work together. So, for example, the front part of the brain um, is more uh, in charge of uh, paying attention to different things and also uh, judgment. Uh, the side part of the brain is uh, actually more in charge of uh, visual spatial skills. And what that means is, uh, you know, where someone is in space, orientation, um, and, you know, for example, getting lost while driving. Uh, and the back part of the brain is more visual, um, so it'll look at uh, more how the visual or, or sight uh, centers are doing in the brain. So the memory test doesn't just look at memory, it actually looks at uh, cognitive function in general or thinking skills. Um, and uh, a problem in one area, for example, if someone can't pay attention to something, then if they can't pay attention, they may not be able to remember it later. Now, that's not a memory problem, that actually may be an attention problem, and if you treat the attention problem, you can actually treat the memory loss. So that's just one example, but these are the variety of things that will be screened. So memory screening is free and easy. Uh, it's also short and shouldn't take more than five or 10 minutes. It's basically a pen and pencil test um, where someone will be asked a variety of questions. You can write your answers. Uh, they'll not only screen your memory, you can say remember a few words or remember what a few objects are. Uh, but also they may make you draw something, either a shape or an object, uh, and they may make you even uh, repeat a list of words. So there's a variety of different ways to screen memory, uh, but they'll also screen thinking skills as well. So the person giving you the uh, memory screening tests uh, may discuss the screening test with you and go over some of the results, uh, but either way they're definitely going to give you the results so that you can take these results to your treating physician or another a qualified medical professional um, because it's really important to not just do the memory screening but discuss the results with your primary care physician uh, because only your physician can take the next step and try to determine you know why are you having trouble with your memory and there's a variety of different causes um, and there's a variety of very easy and simple tests that your doctor can do to figure out the cause and then treat it. So depending on the site, there's a variety of different types of uh, people that may perform the screening. Um, for example, at my clinic, I'll actually perform the uh, screening. Um, in terms of other centers, you may have a social worker, a nurse, a psychologist, uh, uh, a variety of different types of healthcare professionals uh, may actually uh, ask you the questions. Well, sometimes I actually recommend that a patient actually brings a friend to the memory screening uh, because uh, if you can bring someone in, in your same age group, uh, then it's uh, you know helping not only yourself but also a friend. It's also helpful to have someone there for support. Um, you really don't have to bring anything to the memory screening. Uh, they'll have all the tools necessary there, a pen or a pencil uh, and a piece of paper. Um, so just bring yourself, uh, bring a smile, um, and um, come on and get your memory screened. Well, the number one advice is don't be fearful, don't be afraid. Uh, memory loss and even Alzheimer's disease is nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, knowledge is power. Get educated, get informed. There's so many things we can do this year and in the years to come to fight memory loss. And the earlier you get evaluated, the earlier you can learn about these things. And that way you can make brain healthy changes in your life um, and also get treated. So there's a website you can visit. It's called nationalmemoryscreening.org, O-R-G. Um, and on this website, there's a variety of information, uh, not just about where to get screened and what the process is all about, but also there's some great tips about healthy brain aging.
So it's important to understand that when you take a memory screening test, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a diagnosis. All it is is just a simple screening test. If there's a memory problem or a problem with other thinking skills or attention or uh, drawing skills, that just means that it's a sign that you need to get a further evaluation. And the further evaluation has to be done under the guidance of a qualified medical professional, uh, usually a physician, uh, either a family practice or internal medicine doctor.